Okay, I said I'd be doing these sporadically and on a whim, but here we have for some more Purple Hyacinth. We've got two chapters to read today, 133 and 134. So, let's get into it. Also, because there's music in this episode, I won't be putting any in the background of this video. So, deal with the fact there'll be no music if you watch my content regularly. Anyway, let's get into it. Weeping Willow. So... You're telling me that the council voted and collectively agreed to slaughter the snapdragon? That's what the Khan told me. It was in XX16. A bounty had been placed of, had been placed on the snapdragon. And each time they would issue a pamphlet, the court spared no me measure to deny their, their <coughs> alleged defam def <laughs> defamatory <re> <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell I can't speak revelations. Newspapers and radio stations were told what to say. They'd portrayed the Snapdragon as anarchists, liars, and trouble stirrers. Anything to keep a negative public opinion. Then, after the release of their last pamphlet, the bounty was increased significantly. An, anon an, anon <clears throat> an anonymous letter was slipped into the councilman's office, written by the uh, Snapdragon member. It promised information in exchange for protection and money. The council decided to trust their own lead. Their only lead and arrangements were made. I bet it was the leader of uh, the Purple Scythe that dropped that. Although the traitor was never revealed, them though the traitor never revealed themselves, their second and last letter revealed the location and time of the Snapdragon's next meeting. Disappointed, the council tried reaching out for a list of names but got nothing. The traitor had already disappeared with the money. Everything was kept under secrecy. Even the APD didn't know anything of it, so much so that even I was kept in the dark. They knew I would oppose it with all my might. King Edward and the council passed a secret vote to decide the fate of the Snapdragon. The overwhelming majority favored the assassination, and so, on the night of February 24th, and he said 14th, that would have been a bit of an awkward Valentine's Day. The NSA made sure that any living soul present at Orion's print shop, Orion's print shop, would not make it out. That's horrible. How could they have agreed to s something so abject? I can't believe it. But I don't understand why they didn't capture them and execute them instead. And execute them instead. Death penalty was still legal at the time. It wouldn't have been unusual for the court to stifle something that would set the example. Well, since the is inst instauration of the bounty, some tension started rising within the population. Some people still believe the Snapdragon, despite the court's re repudiations. Fuck me. There's so many hard words. Ah. The middle class and the South Shore especially had no reason to reject their request. The Snapdragon was citizens like any other, who didn't pr commit any proper crimes besides their alleged defama defamatory revelations. King Edward grew scared of the reaction to an official execution. Instead, he chose to make them disappear silently, and they were never investigated those people. And they never investigated those people? Fuck me. How could they be sure they got everyone? Any survivors could expose them. Arrogance. The court was arrogant enough to believe that the slaughter would dissuade any survivor from speaking up. Besides, manipulating the truth and pinning the murder on any low life from Grey Chapel would have been easy enough for them. I failed to realize any of the any of this until I received a warning letter from the leader, some time before the Allendale train station tragedy. That's when I understood what they've done, and that all of Ardhalis would have to suffer the consequences. And the court failed to see how wrong they'd been until the tragedy was upon them, and King Edward perished in the explosion. They literally brought it upon themselves? Damn. Thank you for telling me. I didn't know... I can't fathom just how terrible they all were. Yeah. And even knowing what they did, they still willingly ignored the leader's warnings before the Allendale tr train station tragedy. They all could have been avoided, and yet, they did nothing. 
I used to always come here with Dylan. We actually played this, planted this willow with his dad. You'd expect it to have been reduced to ashes by the explosion. But this, this side of the station was the least affected by the fire. The willow burnt partially, but didn't die. It seems stupid, but something about the fact that it survived helped me believe that you're still searching for what happened after his abduction, aren't you? Yeah. I need to know. I wouldn't stop this far either if I were you. Sometimes I wonder if I moved on too quickly with my sister. No one can blame you for it. Your parents tried. Yeah. There was an accident. One among so many others. Look, Lauren. Lauren, look. I'm glad that we can finally speak openly about this. To finally know the truth about you, the court, and the Phantom Scythe. But damn it, please. Please don't ever do something like that to me ever again. I have never been this scared in my entire life. Not since... I know. I know. I'm sorry, Kim. I truly am. It was like reliving that night all over again. Feeling lost and powerless, not understanding what's going on or how we've come to that. Yet part of me precisely understood one thing. And it was that someone that I love was going to die. Don't be mad at me, Kim. I'm a cop, if you can't tell. It's to protect you. I've had the music off the entire time. Fuck. I just realised that. <laughs> Shit. Um, well, that's awkward. I felt similarly when we discovered Harvey's body in that closet. We were blissfully unaware of anything, and the next moment he was dead. There was nothing to do. Dead. There we are. There's music. I don't know how loud it's going to be. I hope you can still hear me fine. She still doesn't know. Then there was you, on the second floor of the factory, running with a bomb in your arms. One second later, dead. I'm sorry. Mind you, thanks for saving us all. I've just, I've just been scared for you and it hasn't stopped ever since you came back. I was scared too, and I wish I could have told you sooner, but it was too dangerous for everyone involved. And what we were doing was also illegal, after all. At least you're aware of it. Just to make uh, sure you can actually hear me, I'll lower the volume of my desktop recording. It should be a bit easier to hear me now. When I teamed up with him, we became Loon. My sole condition was that people close to me would not never get dragged into this. I knew what I was going into. I knew how crazy and hazardous that alliance with Ingol were. But I never wanted to risk the risks I was taking to have repercussions onto you. Where hell are we recording? Okay. I know, Lauren, but the secret is out now. We know now. Your partner is dead. Ah, uh, Keem. The lack of trust. But Loon isn't really. You're still spending your nights investigating your leads, just like you did for Dylan. But we can help this time. We both know that was a lie. You may have your superpower, but mine is that I know your is that I know you better than anyone else. I know when you are lying. I can't tell you who he is, Kim. Gods, I'm getting old. I can't believe my body is feeling stiff from just sitting down. Look, I'm not going to ask you. I get it, you know. You wouldn't lie to me unless it's to protect someone. But I beg you, be careful with what you're doing with him. I'm trying as much as possible. What exactly are you looking for now? What can I do to help you? Kim, you're my best friend, and as much as I'm happy not to have to hide it from you anymore, there are things I just cannot tell you. Information that would put a death flag on anyone holding it. And I've already endangered you and well enough. Listen here, pensive eyes fucker. If you still worry about putting my life in danger... <laughs> I swear to God I'm gonna punch you in the face. 
because I already had to watch you die in front of me. And I couldn't do anything. Stop being so afraid of us getting in harm's way. We are all already in danger. We are all blind, except for you and your partner, it seems. But I don't ever want to feel that powerless again. Never again. I w no, you wouldn't either. It would drive you crazy. Just as it did for me right now. It does for me right now. I know nothing in the world could make it make you stop your activities now. So, let me in. Let me help you. That's the least you can do for me. Fine. You're right. Still, there are some things I cannot tell you. Bruh. But I will when the time is right. I promise. I'll be careful and try not to get into danger unnecessarily. You better, or I'll soak Will's socks in your coffee until the day you die. <laughs> Don't worry, I know better than to awaken your wrath. But if I, but I guess if you're not careful and die too soon, the punishment won't last very long. So this isn't really going to work. Fine, I'll find another one. Kim? 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 Hey, Kim! God damn it. Huh? Nah, 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 nah. Nah, hold the fuck on. What? No, 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 no. What? No. 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 They're not... No. No. Don't you fucking dare. Also, I love how long it's taking to load the next chapter. Here we are. Right, this one doesn't have music. So I might put some over this one. And of course, one of the webtoons I was reading is just... Whatever. Anyway. The blood. The sound. I think... Don't... Don't tell me. No, no, that wouldn't... What? We've been able to stabilize her for the most part in the ER. But I'm still worried about her heart rate. It's unusually slow and irregular. Her blood pressure is also on the rather low end, despite the medication we've given her. On a good note, her fever has come down. We'll continue to monitor her closely and investigate the cause of her symptoms. Thank you, Doctor. Do you have any idea as to what this could be? Well, her presentation is quite peculiar. With the history you've given me, I would be worried about an aggressive infection. Our tests have already ruled out the pulmonary embol embol em em embolisms or pneumonia, which is very good news. But since she's displaying similar symptoms as the actress who died last night, and you've told me Miss Liddell has been in contact with her. But things, if it was golden, if it was the viper venom, it would have killed her ages ago, because that's. Oh, what if it's only a smaller... Mm. I'm wondering if the two cases could be linked. Miss Green's body went progressively stiffer as she started coughing. Rather large amounts of blood. She was dead within just a few minutes. They were barely able to do chest compressions by the end of it. That's how hard our muscles were. What does everything interesting have to happen while I'm out? Tuberculosis doesn't present this, that way, and definitely doesn't act as quickly in a newly infected person. In fact, no medical conditions that I know of act like that, so suddenly and violently. Because there's been a contact, my suspicion for some kind of new infection is still high, but poisoning, as you su suggested, is not out of the question either. 
The description of Miss Green's death sounds like an eff the effects of a potent neurotoxin or venom. That's what I'm starting to think as well. Before I rushed to the hospital, March had told me that Cooper had and Grace had also started feeling sick and went home early. They should probably be sent to the hospital to get checked. Do we know their symptoms? March probably does. We should call him. Infection or poison? It makes no sense. He was barely in contact with Green. She didn't drink, drink or eat anything that night. If it was an infection or if the poison was something volatile, both you and I, the opera crew, both you and I, the opera crew, and many other people should be sick too by now. Don't jinx yourself. I take to have you guys to keep me company around here. In any case, we'll keep you posted. We'll take good care of your friend, and we'll alert you should her state change. However, I'm afraid that she will need to remain in isolation until we know more. All of you should monitor yourselves in the next few days and come to the emergency if you develop similar symptoms. And you, Mr. Randall. Shouldn't be exerting yourself so soon. I'm fine, Doc. Only feeling alive and I'm on the brink of death. Thank you so much, Doctor. Of course. Is there any family we can call on behalf of Miss Liddell? Yes, I'll give you their phone number. I'll also be staying around the hospital for tonight. I... I don't want to stay. Can I leave? No, Mr. Randall. Please get back to your room before I call Nurse Thompson on you. Hospitals are, no, are the only place where hostage is illegal, I swear to the gods. I'll see you guys around. Here's their phone number. Thank you. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. I'll call uh, Miss Liddell's family and we'll be back to check on her in about half an hour. Thank you, Doctor. I see you lot at the hospital way too much these days. Take care of yourselves. She has to be okay, Kieran. She has to. The news are really bad. Both Cooper and Grace had to be transferred to the hospital. And the hospitals told me that the two paramedics who took Green have been admitted to the ICU as well. Sal Sergeant Liddell is at least stable for now. The Opera House director also called to let us know some crew members have fallen sick. This is very worrisome. All who've been in contact with Green are falling like flies. The last thing we need is a new disease spreading around. The symptoms everyone's experiencing are most reminiscent of a snake's bite. In that case, do you think this could be the Vipers doing? I suspect it could be the case. If they decided to change their modus operandi, all the victims had one thing in common. A cut. Which isn't the case here. The investigation must continue even if Cooper is down. Anyone else you could give the case to? I'm afraid everyone else is already busy on complicated cases. I'll take it on and make it my priority. Thank you much. I'd rather have this urgent case in your hands than anyone else's. You're our best detective. On one condition, though. I think I know where this is going. Yes? I request Officer Sinclair's active participation in the investigation. What? It only makes sense. She's a first-hand witness and her intuition is an asset I want to have on this case. You know I hate having her hands, my hands forced, March. People will question your fairness as captain if you prolong her demotion much longer. They already are. How dare you! You know I'm right. Fine. <laughs> Do whatever you want. But you better find the culprit quickly. Of course. It's in everyone's best interest that they do. Is it even affecting her? What the hell? And obviously it's going to be affecting Darcy because of how close she was to Green. How are you feeling now, lady? Better, thank you. I still have a headache, but nothing that's going to stop a good night, a good night's sleep won't fix, I think. That's good, milady. I wish you a good night, then. As affecting the people around her. 
gods. Oh boy. Oh no. Well, that's an interesting development. Oh god. Um... I have no idea where this is going. I have some ideas of what the cause could be. Most likely... It is... Uh, I don't know, is it the Viper Venom? Or is it... Something similar but different? Fuck, I have no- I actually don't know, I've got no idea. Fuck, right, well, I'll see you... Who knows when for another one of these. Leave a like, comment, sub, hit notification bell. You know the usual YouTube thing. And with all that said... I've been Animosity, you've been you, and I hope to see you next time with another video. Ta-ta, for now. <laughs>